right, welcome to another Brain Joe Bite. Today's episode is based on another question that I received. Uh, it's a question that I've heard many times over the years related to an issue that I know many people struggle with. The question came from Liz, who said, Anyone have tips for those of us who are really bad at memorizing? I usually do okay with tab in front of me, but have struggled to memorize anything since childhood. It's definitely not easier now that I'm 61 and learning to play the banjo. All right, thanks Liz for that question. It's a great one. And so there are two primary reasons why somebody would have problems with remembering a tune or a song that they've learned on their instrument. And there's really one simple question that you can ask to figure out which of those reasons it is. And one of the reasons this is such a great question is because it highlights an area that is oftentimes a hidden stumbling block for people. So if we take the entire body of possible knowledge that is important or relevant to developing expertise in playing music, we can divide that into three main categories. The first being the stuff that you know, so these are the things that you've already learned and you've developed some degree of proficiency in. Then there's the stuff that you know that you don't know, right? So these, this is the category of knowledge and skills that you know you still need to work on and that you don't currently possess. And then the third category is the stuff that you don't know that you don't know. So in this category are knowledge and skills that uh, are necessary for you to work on and refine in order to make progress and grow, but that you aren't aware of that you need to know. And things in this category cause people to get stuck for reasons that they don't understand. Oftentimes people in this situation end up concluding that it must mean that they've just reached the limits of their ability uh, or that they're stuck because they're just not talented enough, when the real issue is one of these hidden barriers. And I bring up this concept here because one of the most common hidden barriers to progress is musical memory. One of the foundational basic skills of playing music is being able to remember how the music goes. Again, it's one of those things like talking that we can take for granted, but it's actually a complex skill. There's a lot of information contained in just a simple melody line. But one reason why it can be such a big stumbling block is because number one, as I said, it's absolutely essential to playing music. So if you don't have it, it's going to interfere with virtually everything you try to do. And number two, because it is seldom discussed or addressed in music instruction or education. Those of you watching or listening who are part of the Breakthrough Banjo course are familiar with the Banjo Players Roadmap, where we divide the three categories of musical knowledge into technical skills, musical concepts, and ear training. And we, we consider that third category of the things we don't know that we don't know, they're almost always going to come from either the area of musical concepts or ear training. And musical memory uh, falls into the category of ear training, which is really just describing your brain's auditory system for processing music and all of the different capabilities that are within that, that feed into your ability to play music. Incidentally, if you want to grab the Banjo Player's Roadmap, um, I'll put a link in the uh, video description here. All right, so back to the original question. What should you do if you find it hard to memorize songs that you've learned? And remember I said there are really, really two main reasons why this would occur. And one question to ask that will help figure out which one of those it is. So the first, the question to ask is, do you have trouble singing or humming melodies from, mem from memory? So in other words, do you struggle to remember how a song goes even after you've listened to it many times? And I'm not talking about the lyrics to a song, I'm just talking about the melody. So are you able to hum the, hum the um, melody to a tune or a song that you've heard multiple times? If the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, it's hard for you to, to, to remember a melody from memory, then the problem is with your musical memory or your ability to recall uh, melodies. Now this issue tends to be much more common amongst people who don't like to sing um, because people who like to sing, regardless of whether it's in front of others or in the car or in the shower, have spent their lives practicing this skill or, this, uh, or building their musical memory. 
But for those who who never really sing uh, and haven't played an instrument before, the issue may truly be one of musical memory. And if that's the case, then what you need to work on specifically is your ability to remember or memorize songs or melodies. Again, just like anything else, this is a skill that gets better with practice. And the best way to do so is to take songs and try to sing or hum them from memory. Um, you can start with ones that you already know well, that, you're, that are very familiar to you, but that you've never committed to memory. Uh, and then you can try uh, learning new ones that you haven't heard before. But again, the key here is to practice the very thing that you're struggling with. The common perception, I think, in this particular area is that this is one of those things that you're born with. You either have a good musical memory or you don't. That idea was kind of inherent in Liz's question, uh, which was, you know, what's the advice for people who are bad at memorizing as if uh, this is some kind of fixed ability, which is not at all true. One of my favorite examples here is the story of Joshua Foer, who is the author of the book Moonwalking with Einstein. So he was writing this book about the world of competitive uh, memory contests. And so these are contests where people compete on various memory challenges. You may be familiar with them. Uh, they perform these feats that uh, when you know, people first encounter them, they seem impossible like magic. And as part of his research for the book, uh, Foer trained with a prior uh, memory champion and then he entered and won the uh, U.S. Memory Championships himself. And again, he went into this without any special memory ability whatsoever. And that's actually true of the vast majority of the elite competitors in, this, in this, these competitions. None of them start out having the, any remarkable uh, memory abilities, but rather they develop those abilities through training and practice. So if you struggle with musical memory, then work on building your musical memory. And so if the answer to that first question is no, you don't struggle to hum or sing tunes that you've, you've heard many times, then the issue is going to be one of learning process. And this is another perfect illustration of why how we practice is so critical uh, to our success. Imagine I were to ask you to read a page of text and then you had a choice of either reciting that text back word for word from memory or summarizing it back to me in your own words. Which of those would you find easier to do? I think everybody would say the second, right? And that's because summarizing it back in your own words is based on language fluency that you've developed, whereas reciting a full page of text from memory is incredibly hard. Likewise, if you're learning songs directly from written notation of one form or another, your options, if you want to play from memory, are either to memorize the entire notation or tab visually, or to memorize the entire sequence of movements. First of all, both of those are very challenging things to do. And second, both of those methods will lock you into one way of playing. So even if you do remember it, it will be virtually impossible to play it any other way but the way you've memorized it. And so that will make it next to near impossible to do things like play with other musicians uh, or play variations and embellishments. And again, this is a common reason why folks end up, uh, folks who can play music fine at home go to play with others in a jam or whatever and really struggle and don't understand why. There's a reason that classical musicians who do learn to play by rote, so reading sheet music, play with the sheet music in front of them rather than trying to memorize the whole thing. But as I've talked about elsewhere, unless you're trying to learn music by rote like a classical musician, our ultimate goal in learning music is to develop what I refer to as musical fluency. And we want to follow a, a path and a learning process that gets us there, right? A, a path that creates the, le the neural machinery necessary to do so. So like fluency with language, where we're able to transform ideas in our minds into movements of our vocal cords to get those out into words, musical fluency is the ability to take music in our minds and transform that those sounds into a motor program for moving our limbs so that the music comes out of our instrument. Another way to say that is that we want to create sound to motor neural networks or mappings in the brain. Networks that can transform sound into a motor program. 
And incidentally, that is exactly what you do when you sing or hum a song that you've learned. You're taking a sound that exists in mental space, transforming it into a motor program for moving the muscles that control your vocal apparatus and sing it. So you have likely already developed some degree of musical fluency for your, for your voice. And when learning an instrument, our goal is to build the exact same kind of neural machinery, the only difference being that the motor programs are controlling different muscles. So again, if you can sing or hum songs from memory, but you have a hard time memorizing songs, then it's almost certainly because you're building different kinds of motor networks than the ones I just described. In this case, you're building networks for transforming written notation, in this case tab, into a motor program. And if those are the kind of networks you're building, then playing music from memory requires that you memorize the written notation. Again, a very hard thing to do. Like I said, this is one of those issues that really gets at the heart of why your learning path matters so much. A lot of music instruction has been based on the classical method for learning music, but the only problem with that is that unless you're wanting to learn to play classical music by rote, you'll end up building the wrong kinds of networks. For someone who is trying to learn classical music to play in a symphony orchestra, for example, then what they want to do is build vision to motor neural networks, ones that can transform visual information, in this case, musical notation, into movements of the limbs. So if you've taken a learning path that's intended to build networks for creating vision to motor transformations, then having trouble memorizing notation shouldn't be viewed as a shortcoming. The whole learning process is designed to allow you to, to take music that you see in front of you and play it on your instrument. Again, an entirely different skill than what we're after. If you're a banjo player or playing an instrument or genre that isn't about reading music by rote, it's almost a certainty that those aren't the kinds of networks that you want to build. And that means taking a different learning path. So what is the solution in this case if you find yourself in this predicament? The first is to understand how to learn from written notation. So um, notation, like tab, can be a great tool for conveying information. And when it's used wisely, it can accelerate your progress as a musician, but it can also undermine it. I cover this in detail in the um, Breakthrough Banjo course, and I'll do a future Banjo Bite on the process that I recommend when learning or using tab in your learning process. And then the second thing to work on is developing your ear. Again, one of the key components of musical fluency is ear training. So working on developing your ear is a critical piece in building those networks that support musical fluency. Remember, the goal there is to transform sounds into movements of our limbs. Visual representations are not a part of that at all. And part of the musician's journey is relying less and less on visual information and more and more on your ear or auditory information. All right, thank you, Liz, for submitting that question. That is it for this Brain Joe Bite, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching this episode of Brain Joe Bites. To catch future episodes, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you haven't done so already. You can also hear these episodes on the Brain Joe Jam podcast, and you'll find a link to that in the video description. Also, if you are ready to get started learning the banjo, then head over to brainjo.academy. There you will find courses based on the Brain Joe method, the first neuroscience-based system of instruction designed specifically for grown-up brains with no prior musical experience required. Thank you.